Welcome back to Huawei Routing and Switching Elite Training for HCIE. Today topic we are going to discuss on BGP. Let's start our part 4. Now, next we are going to look into next hop attribute. Now, next hop attribute record the next hop of the route and this is a well-known mandatory. So, in another word, all BGP have to support it and they have to uh, advertise this in their update. Now we have three scenarios here. The first scenario, we have R1 with the 10 network that need to be advertised in all IBGP um, network relationship. Now R1 will have a full mesh between R1 and R2 and R1 to R3. Now when R1 advertised to R2, the next hop is definitely 12.1.1.1. Now, when R1 advertised to R3, do you notice that the NLRI for the 10 network is still 12.1.1.1 even though physically R1 doesn't connect to R3 directly but going through R2. The reason is because that within the IBGP, I will not change my next hop. I will remain my next hop as the local advertisement. In this case, my local interface is 12.1.1. .1. I will remain as it is. Now, on the second scenario, I have two ASs, AS100 and AS200. Now, R1 will advertise to R2 as IBGP. That's this the same as a previous example. But now the difference is if R2 advertise to R3, the relationship now is EBGP. Now, since the relationship is EBGP, R2 is going to change its next hop to itself. So as you can see that any LRI of 10 network, the next hop is 23.1.1.1 because R2 and R3 is EBGP, right? Now, in this scenario, we have two ASs as well. So this time I have AS100 and AS200. Now, R1 advertised to R2 of the network 10 Zero, zero, zero. Upon receive the information, R2 is going to advertise this information to R3 in IBGP. Now because R2 and R3 is in IBGP, the concept of BGP next hop say that if R1 advertise to R2, it will be no difference that R1 advertise to R3. So the next hop will remain. Okay, so in another word, if R3 in return want to go back to R1, then you will have a problem because in my routing table, for me to go to 10 network, my next hop is 12.1.1.1. If you are not going to advertise this in your IGP, then R3 will have no information on how to go into the net, uh, the 10 network because 12.1.1.1 is not directly connected to it. So one of the solution is in R2, we are going to define the next hop local. Okay, so when you do a next hop local, the next hop will change to 23.1.1.1 when it's advertised to R3. All right. Let us examine the route attribute of local preference. Now the definition of local preference is like this. The local preference attribute indicate the BGP preference of a router and help determine the optimum route when traffic leave an AS. In another word, local preference is used to advertise to IBGP. In this case, let's look into AS100. is an IBGP neighbor, R1 and R2 and R1 and R3. This is an IBGP. So it's only influence IBGP to how to leave your AS. So R1 want to exit from 100. So if R1 want to exit from its own AS, it's going to use a local preference. Let's look into this topology. In this topology, I have four ASs, 100, 200, 300, and 400. Now R1 need to go to R6 where I need to go to this NLRI, 10 network. Now, how one have two choices? I can go to R2 to exit 100 AS, or I can use R3 to go out from AS 100. This is my outbound traffic. Now, assuming that now you want to prefer 
between R2 and R3, you want it to prefer R2 is the preferred router for R1 to go out or outbound. Now, what you can do here is that on R2, you can create a policy and advertise to R1 saying that I have a preference of 300, whereas R3 have a preference of 200. Now, R1 then, upon receive two IBGP, going to the same NLRI of 10 network, R1 is going to do a selection. Between these two local preference, I'm going to choose whichever that is higher. So when the value of the local preference is higher, I'm going to use that as a gateway for me to exceed my AS. So there you go. All right. So local preference is to influence the uh, R1 to go outbound, to exit from uh, your AS. And by default, if you have not configured any policy, the local preference will always 100. And also remember that local preference is a well-known discretionary attribute. In another word, all router, regardless on the vendor, need to support local preference, but they need not to advertise this in their update. Okay, that is means by discretionary. Let's look into MED. MED stands for multi-exit discriminator. It's an attribute to help determine the optimum route that when traffic enter an AS. And MED is an optional non-transitive. Okay, so let's look into this diagram. This topology, I have two AS, so AS100 and AS200. The NLRI of 10 is in uh, AS100, and it's being advertised by R1 and R2. Now, R1 have an eBGP with R3, and R2 have an eBGP with R4. Both of them have eBGP. Now R1 advertised this uh, information to R3 and it actually attached an MED of 200 to R3. Whereas R2 advertised this network in the uh, update using MED of 300. Now between these two, MED of 200 and 300, MED is function of as the IGP metric. In another word, the lower is the preferred value. So it's between R1 and R2 that's entering to 100, R1 will be preferred. Okay, so when R3 receives this information, it's going to do a comparison between 200 and 300. So R3 will use R1 to enter into AS100. Now R4 also do the same thing. They are going to do a comparison between 300 and 100. So R4 will also will be using R1 to enter into AS100. So that is where the MED is being used to influence the eBGP on how you can enter into your own AS. Let's look into the community attribute. Community attribute is an optional transitive attribute. Okay, the main purpose of the community is a tagging method. Um, it main use is to set the route with certain tag. In this case, the tag we call it as a community attribute. This tag will have certain meaning and this tag can be used for both internal AS and between AS. Now first you can see that there is a self-defined community attribute and the attribute of the community is in the format of system bit colon system bit. Okay, so it is like AA colon and N. So we can define our own self community. So it can be from 0, 0 to 65535 to 65535, even though these this are the uh, reserve um, attribute. Now we also have a well known community attribute. The well known community attribute are internet, no advertise no export and no export sub-confederation. So let's look into this topology. So here I have three AS's, 100, AS200, and AS300. Now, all the community by default is belong to internet if you never configure anything. Internet means that it's an internet route and meant for internet community. So for the internet, you can advertise this community to any of the AS's. Whereas the no advertise 
is very restrictive. Okay, so let's look into the no advertise. Now let's say now I have a NLRI of 10 that is belong to R1. So R1, when it's advertised this 10 NLRI to R2, is also tag a community of no advertise. Now when R2 receive this NLRI of 10 with a no advertise, R2 will not advertise this to anyone else even though this is a IBGP, okay? That is means by no advertise. It's for you only. Whereas for the no export, for example, let's look into the community of no export. R4 have the NLRI of 172.16. That's belong to R4. R4 advertise this NLRI to R3 with a tag of no export. The community of no export means that it is for your own AS only. So R3 will share this information to R2. This is allowed. But R2 is not allowed to advertise this route to anyone else beside AS200. So R2 will not advertise that to AS100. So in this case, I'll contain this NLRI only for 200. So that's the difference between no advertise and no export. So no advertise is for that particular router, whereas no export is for a particular AS. Whereas the no export sub-confederation, this is for confederation, you are not allowed to export beyond your confederation or beyond your AS if you do have the confederation. So that is where we are using a community. So it's very, very useful. We will look at the um, lab on how we can make use of the community. Let's look into Huawei uh, BGP route selection. Okay, so assuming that now I have a router that I want to go into a network of 10. Okay, and for, for me to go to the network 10, I have multiple next hop. Let's say the next hop over here is 1, 2, 3, 4. Then I have a 2, 4, 6, 8. Then I have a 192.168.10.1, for example. So I do have multiple next hop going to the same NLRI. Now, under such a circumstances, if let's say I am a BGP, I'm going to choose one of these to become my best next hop and will be installed into my IP RIB. Okay, so how am I going to select out of this option the best one to install? we need to go through what we call the BGP routing rules. So these are the routing rules. Okay, so the first thing the BGP will look for is that the next hop must be valid. Now, if it's not valid, it will not go into the selection list at all. Okay, so if let's say the next hop is valid, then the first criteria they'll look into is the preferred value. Now, preferred value is an Huawei uh, specific value so other vendor will not able to use this value and uh, the value of the prefer preferred value basically means that if I have two interfaces which interface is preferred so I have this as my preferred value if this preferred value is higher I'm going to use this interface first compared to uh, the others so this is a preferred value this is first in the list now second, they are going to prefer the route with the highest local preference. So assuming that there is no preferred value, then they will going to look into the local preference. Local preference, as I mentioned earlier on, is for you to go out from your AS. And local preference, the higher the local preference value is more preferred. If there is no local preference, or the local preference is a tie, then the next uh, criteria they'll look into is a locally generated route. It means that if let's say I have a route that 10 okay, is come in from uh, remote and I also have a 10 network that is using a network statement okay, or it is an import statement. So this is considered local, locally generated route. So I'll prefer a locally generated route rather than the remote route. Okay. So if both of the route, okay, if all these route are all remote, so in this case I have a tie, then the next I'm going to look into the shortest AS path. The shorter will be preferred based on the AS path. 
And if all the A's path is the same, then I'm going to look for the lowest origin type. So first, they are going to look for the I. I will be preferred over E, and E will be preferred over the uh, incomplete. All right. And if let's say there's a tie again, then only I'm going to look for the lowest MED. Okay. And if let's say the MED is the same or there is no MED, I'm going to prefer the EBGP route. So please remember that EBGP will be preferred over IBGP. Okay, even though they are uh, what we call the uh, distance is 255. Okay, the preference is 255. Okay, but internally they'll prefer the EBGP over IBGP. Now, if let's say there's also a tie, then I'm going to prefer the route with the lowest IGP metric only if let's say you have a load balance. Okay, and if let's say that's also the same. We are going to look into the cluster ID, or in this case, the cluster list. And uh, if let's say the cluster list is not available, then we are going to look into the smallest router ID. And finally, if everything is the same, or if do if we do not have the um, uh, option over here, all the options are the remain the same, then we are going to look into the lowest IP address. Okay to be used as our default gateway to go out. All right, so this is a Huawei selection criteria for the BGP to choose which is my best and the valid next hop. Thanks for watching. Please do not forget to subscribe to our channel.